Okay. Um, on Wednesday, um, my 10 year anniversary edition of Yikes, which I've decided to call Crikey for obvious reasons, uh, it comes out. And what I've done with this is I've got into the multi track project of each tune and I've reworked the mix downs in what I believe is a much more technically proficient way, um, not to get them louder, but to get them clearer and to bring out some parts that I didn't bring out before. Um, and I'm gonna do a few sort of track teardowns um, so you can see what's inside the tracks and what the processes are. This is round the world in a day. And this tune has got a long history. Okay, um, I'm going to play you the, the two early versions that I did. I did one in like 1978 when I was 17 years old. Um, and uh, it's, I need to find the file now. You may have noticed that the theme is influenced by Close Encounters. Um, do, 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 do. Well, the original version was actually just me uh, me putting that in a kind of like really terrible. <laughs> um, no, no, I was, I was young. It was okay. Listen. <laughs> Now, yes, I did clean the intro up and use it in the final version. I was heavily into a, a stomp box that I bought, investing all my money in actually, called the Resonator. A really, really good chorus pedal, not, not, not well known at all. So that was the actual very, very first sketch. Um, and then I formed a band when I was at college and uh, we we sort of did a version. It's pretty dreadful, but we did it. This much. So that was quite influenced by the Stranglers, actually, especially that, that kind of second bit. Anyway, which takes us to uh, Round the World in a Day, thus called because I gave it to Elsa Esmeralda to write lyrics on, and she came up with this really, really sort of like epic song of a journey, like a migration from the east to the west. And uh, what was so good for me, and what's so good for me actually with the the 10 year anniversary version. I think I've got it right. Kevin Sorker, 
the amazing, amazing drummer uh, from America who currently plays or was playing with Pendulum Live. Um, I sent it to him and Kevin laid down a full live uh, drum kit. Um, now, as you can see, I've got Kevin's drums up here. Um, I separated all his stems out and you can actually see that I've gone in and done some like to the 16th at times beat surgery for the whole live performance that took a while um it's not because kevin can't play in time he can but to get it to sit in a drum and bass track um requires uh, a certain level of timing control so anyway let's let's just check kevin's drums shall we from the intro <laughs> So I kept every beat of his live performance and went in on it to get it sitting right and sounding right. Um, what have I put on the kick drum? Uh, that's on the actual track. I subgroup everything, as you might know. Um, I'm really, really anal about subgrouping. Don't know why, I just love it. I just can't, <laughs> I can't have a tune that isn't got everything, hasn't got everything. So I'll tell you why. Um, it's because, uh, I'll tell you what it is, it's because if, you know when you're building a track and everything gets too loud and you're driving the output bus too much and you think, oh, I wish I'd started each track quieter. Well, if I put everything through subgroups and no track goes directly to the stereo out, then it's very easy to grab all of the subgroups um, using Q-Link on Cubase um, and just pull them all down together and it pulls them down together brilliantly. Um, and then I've got a nice, not too loud signal going into the stereo out bus. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry, that's long. Um, so yeah, uh, the kick drum. Now where's my kick drum subgroup? Uh, these are my subgroups, Kevin drum. There's Kevin drums, where's it gone, yeah. Oi, stop doing that, stop moving. Uh, there's Kevin Drum's subgroup, um, which is quite simple what it's got on it. It's just got the glue. Cytomic, the glue, is it's really my favourite bus compressor. It's brilliant. It's based on the, um, the classic SSL bus compressor. It's brilliant. I love it. And I've just got a little limiter just to catch things. Um, oh, I should have had that on auto-release. Uh, As you can see, Kevin's drums are actually going through that. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, where are they going through? Oh, they are. Oh, that's weird. Um, oh, here we are. So the limit is not really, it's just there as a safeguard, but it's not actively doing anything, I don't think. Um, Let's see how the bus compressor is behaving on those drums. It's pretty mild. It's only doing about one or two dBs tops, but um, it's gluing it together. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's Kev's drums. And um, let's have a butcher's. On this right should we let's bring the bass in shall we um the bass i had a lot of fun with oh shit all right i meant that was a bit too small um yeah i had a, had a lot of fun with the okay solo the drums um and the bass and the bass has got a basically like a live Um, 
which sounds really kind of odd on its own, I, I have to confess. But um, it's it's not that odd uh, when you add in the sub bass. So I played the sub bass in just to match every note of the live bass and I did do a really kind of toppy um, version of the bass line which I've just dropped little bits in every now and then because it actually was causing so much clash with the the drums, you know, it was really transient-y and uh, doesn't work in a... I mean, I, I don't call this a drum bass tune but it is 173 and it is vaguely kind of like drum bassy. Um, so... Right, I've got all of the rhythm guitars in their own folder, which means I can actually bring those in quite easily. Um, cause there's a lot of guitars in this tune. Those sound too quiet, but I think when I put the whole tune in. Actually, I might turn them out. They are a bit, a bit quiet, aren't they? Uh, let's have a look. Um, I was too late to change the actual release version, but for this version, let's, let's have a little play. Where are they? Um, so let me solo uh, these two guitar tracks. Um, there's two because I did one. I tend to do things in pairs so I can pan them. Here we are, rhythm guitar two. Oh, sorry, there, there it is. Okay, uh, what makes the theme? Uh, the theme is it's quite similar. It's, I think it's just guitars and um, oh, I put a piano in there and a harp. Oh. Yeah. I did. Cool. Um, now, uh, there's other important components that I think I did forget about. Well, they're in, but I didn't really make the most of them. Um, they're really nice. The Spacey, like Jupiter 8 and uh, the Vanguard Arp. Right, yeah, and that, um, I love that harp, it's really nice, but I didn't really make most of it originally. Um, so the way I uh, I actually used the original tape recording from 1978 um, for the intro here, because it, I love it, it sounds really nice. Um, and I just kind of spliced it and cleaned it a lot. So it's this, and I gave it a bit more chorus with the amazing towel, which is basically like exactly the same as the chorus unit of the Juno 106, I think it is. Or Juno, maybe Juno 60. I love it though. Yeah, so I plonked this on the beginning sort of got it in time a little bit and then introduced new stuff this is using the scan synth which is a really old synth but it's really nice and then Jupiter 8 up just to give it a transition oh 
Hello, Elsa. Um, so, uh, let's do this chronologically. Um, Elsa introduces herself with the six-part vocal harmony uh, that sounds like this, and it's nice and sort of dissonant -y with semitones and stuff. That last chord is awesome um, from Elsa. It's really, really nice. It's got that beautiful semitone in it. Um, now, what? Uh, yeah, what was she? She's on the R's channel subgroup, um, and I've simply got uh, the BX solo, uh, which is a lovely free plugin from Brainworks. I'm um, just increasing the stereo width. Um, it's going through the D16 Tora verb, which is really my favourite room reverb. Uh, it's been around for a while. I love it. It's really, really good at just small spaces. You know, it's nice. The other one I like is by Eventide. Um, that's is an Eventide room reverb that's really, really nice as well. Um, so they, yeah, horses for courses really. And uh, yeah, roll off the bottom end as always. Um, if you don't need it, unless it's a sub track. So that's the R's and Elsa. Comes back in. Obviously, we've got the lead vocal, which uh, which is beautiful. Um, okay. So, what have I done to the lead vocal? Um, I have I've dipped a little bit at. 325 hertz because it was a little bit room boomy um rolled off the bottom end uh often find with with vocals if they're not recorded in a really posh studio that there is some kind of low mid room resonance so you search for it by boosting the eq on a very low low uh, bandwidth um high q and uh find the horrible room resonance and then dip it down it takes about five seconds it's really quick now what have i got this vocal going through um, the Oxford Suppressor, which is probably my favourite DSer, actually. Um, it's really good. The Cubase one's really good as well. Better keep to the side. I let nothing get in my way. Now, I've got that first. I've got a chain here. That's doing the initial DSing. Then I'm going through the gem dopamine. Now the gem dopamine is really interesting because it emulates a trick that I used to do in the days of tape recording. Now, I kind of stumbled upon it. I had an eight track and had DBX noise reduction. And noise reduction in those days was basically, it encoded before it went to tape and it encoded by really boosting and compressing the, the high mid range and then what you were supposed to do when you played it back, you had a decoder which reduced by the exactly the same amount the the compression and the the high mid boost, um, and it was very effective because it meant that you could get a lot more high frequency content on the tape, and when it played back, you'd have a lower noise floor. One day when I was this is when I was recording Sam Edwards for. Don't give up now with Is It back in the day. Um, I was playing Sam's vocal back and I forgot to have the decode on and it sounded incredible. Really noisy when she wasn't singing, but it sounded absolutely brilliant and stood out in the track. So I was overjoyed when I heard that Gem, um, which is the Overloud plugin company from Italy, they actually made a plugin that only does this. And you've got a choice between Dolby A, noise reduction, or the noise stressor. I think I think that might be DBX. Anyway, I don't, don't really care. It sounds wicked. Um, it really, yeah. Where's Elsa gone? Um, I will, let's just leave that bit there. So I'll give you before and after. 
And yeah, I, I bought this plugin. I don't. I do get sent some plugins, but I don't. I buy plugins if I want them. Um, World in a day, no rain on this parade. So I just wanted to say that so you don't think I'm bigging something up that someone gave to me. Um, right, the group. Oh no. It's easy to get lost in these situations. So there we go. Um, right, with and without the dopamine, without. A day, no rain on this parade. Better, better keep to the side. I let nothing now get. I I know you think you can't hear the difference, but it does make a difference. It really makes it stand out um, in the tune. Trust me. Uh, I've got, then got the Cubase DS on after the dopamine because the dopamine does boost a lot of the sibilance. Nothing get in my way. World in a day. No rain on this parade. Better keep to the side. So, um, yeah, and then I'm rounding it off with the RX mouth D click module. Um, Isotope RX, by far the best in class at um, denoising and basically post production cleaning up audio. And they got these little modules that you can actually put in the door, which is lovely. Um, and this catches clicks. So it tells you how many clicks have been repaired. Look. World in a day, no rain on this parade. Better keep. If I output clicks only. That's actually Elsa. That's her mouth clicks. I like it. It sounds like kind of drops of water in a cave. Wow. Um, anyway, what else have we got? I think that might be. Isn't the lot? Covered the keyboards, bass. We've covered um, the theme. We've covered the guitars. Oh yeah, the bridge jangly guitars. Um, very influenced by the Smiths, obviously. Let's have the jangle guitars on their own. Um, I really have fun with these. <laughs> I'll go to this second it's not really there is no chorus in this tune this is kind of bridge i call them bridge jangles um let's put elsa in and then elsa's lovely backing vocals as well they're, they're awesome naked or overdressed crying on request So, yeah, the other bit of this organ. It's a really old Italian plugin. It's called VB3. Uh, I don't even know if you can get it anymore, but I burnt it. Um, like, I, I rendered the, I rendered all my instruments and weird plugins because I knew that it might get out of date. Um, let's have a look. VB3 organ VST. 
uh, and oh, yeah, 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 there we go by GSI. I think it stopped at 32 bit. I don't know unless they've um, have they updated it. Some butchers. Where's the technical spec? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. VST 364 bits. So they must have done. Oh cool. Right, I'm gonna get the update of that. So I'm pretty sure mine is ancient. Let's just have a butchers here. BB3. Yeah, I had to run it through the DMF bridge, which kind of creates a new plugin out of uh, an old plugin. So it creates a 64 bit out of a 32 bit. It's quite nifty. So there it is. Uh, that's the old 32 30 bit version. And it's kind of a bit, it does work. You can change the parameters, it just kind of flashes sometimes. But anyway, um, I digress. So get rid of that. Uh, that's the tune. That's Around the World in a Day. And finally, in the fourth incarnation, I think I got it right and I brought the whole thing to life. And it's been a journey since 1978, uh, which is it's quite a lot of years. Uh, thank you for watching this. I hope you've learned something. And if you like the tune, I hope you've learned a bit more about what's in the tune. Okay, peace out. Enjoy Crikey, the 10-year anniversary version of Yikes.